I'm curious now, we've talked a little bit, um, like for this first bit, just talking about like theism and such, but like what kind of led you to like Christian theism, if you could dive into it a little more specifically, um, you talked about the idea of just like this ultimate, um, like I know you didn't say ultimate love story in a sense, but like you see the love, especially like through the cross and God taking the flesh, but like what led you from like a general, like philosophical theism into like a Christian theism? Yeah, that actually took me quite a while, but first of all, if you just believe God exists, then you're basically a deist, right? Mm -hmm. You just believe there is a God. And then there are certain questions to ask, right? The first question is, has God revealed himself, right? That's obviously the question. Maybe he hasn't revealed himself, as I contemplated for some time. Maybe all the revealed religions are just wrong about this. Mm -hmm. And then, but... Thinking more about this, I actually came more and more to the conclusion that the message of uh, Christianity is something that I, it's hard, it's hard to put this in concrete terms, but it's something that actually stands out from, not just from its time, but from any time. Mm. Um, there is something I think that is so essential to Christianity that isn't really really even properly expressed in the scripture. There is this fundamental problem, right? Mm -hmm. if, if there's an afterlife and there is a God, if the God is all loving, then he wants everybody to be in unity with him, in blissful unity for eternity. Mm -hmm. But if God has created imperfect beings, morally imperfect beings, then this God actually, if he's perfectly just, cannot grant this kind of unity to just anybody they, because the beings simply do not deserve it, right? Mm. That's a sort of like almost paradoxical, almost a paradox. What could better uh, unify and overcome this contradiction than Jesus is suffering on the cross? This is kind of the God that puts love over pure justice, right? O over cold, mechanistic just uh, justice, you can say. It's a judgment. Maybe there's a judgment, but it's a judgment out of love. It is a judgment more of the doctor looking at the patient and looking, judging what is wrong with him, not the kind of cold judgment of a judge who bangs his gavel and hands out a sentence, right? Mm -hmm. That was my... That was something, and I think William Lane Craig also mentioned something like this, that Actually, I thought this is such such a central truth and a central issue of all human existence that I thought, well, this religion really makes sense. Mm. So, so yeah, yeah, keep going. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what would you say? Like, um, was there like? like an argument for the resurrection? Like, was that part of it at all? Because for a lot of people that look at like, maybe like an argument for the resurrection or was it more of like the things you've been talking about um, already in terms of like bringing you to like a Christian theism? Um, I believe that the arguments for the resurrection have their place, but I think this is a newer development actually. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not actually aware of historically speaking that in uh, earlier centuries, this was the kind of approach that Christians took to arguing we have certain facts here in the manuscripts, right? Mm -hmm. We have certain papyri and we have this and that. Now we make this kind of Bayesian case that the, pro that the resurrection is the most probable historical uh, theory and then we're trying to convince people. What I think is actually arguments should rather... They should rather give a basis for it that it could have happened, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can prove such a thing to anybody. Yeah, I think this is taking um, this is actually, I think, an apologetic mistake to give people the impression either we can prove it or we can't, right? And if we can't prove it, then they will just say, okay, then the religion is refuted, right? Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. I don't think you can really prove what happened 2,000 years ago with with a person. There's a little bit more. What you can do is basically say the facts are not against it, right? The evidence, there is some basis, some evidential basis for the idea, but it's not, uh, it's not that we can beat you over the head with a probability. 
I mean, some people make fun of Richard Swinburne when he can alluded to, well, there's a 97% probability uh, that it happened. I know that's not exactly what he said, but this is the, I think that's the wrong approach. Mm-hmm.